Now that you've seen some examples of what you can build with machine learning, let's start talking about how machine learning helps you do it. For many of the things we'll be building in this class, it's helpful to think in terms of how they fit into the following structure. We've got sensors of some sort that provide information about what a person is doing. These can be your game controller, your webcam, your microphone, or you might have some other type of input into the system. This could be something like a humidity or GPS sensor. It could be your Twitter feed or anything else you can imagine. But the point is you have information coming in about a person or about the world. We're going to call this the input. This input gets sent to some sort of process that makes sense of this data. The computer has to figure out what sort of action to take based on what's happening in the inputs. In my drum controller, for example, this process had to look at the webcam data and decide whether it was seeing me, not me, or my hand. In the leap motion controller, this process had to look at my hand position and to decide what value should be set for each of the three sound processing controls at that instant in time. In the voice-controlled game, this module had to look at properties of my voice and how they were changing over time in order to decide if I had just finished speaking any of the words in my control vocabulary. Once the computer has decided what to do, the last step is to do it. This is the piece of sound synthesis code that actually makes the sound once you know what sound to make. Or this is the piece of code in your game that moves your character once you know that it should move to the left or jump. We're generally going to call this module the output. In this class, we'll often talk about interactive systems in terms of these three components, the input, the processing or decision making, and the output. Now, if you were going to build a new system from scratch without using machine learning, you'd probably find yourself spending a lot of time writing and tweaking this middle processing piece, figuring out how to write a function that looks at the input values coming in and decides what output values should go out. The example you see here is an excerpt of some code I wrote in Chuck to take leap motion values to control some simple synthesis parameters. It took a lot of tweaking to get right, and it's actually a really simple instrument that's not very fun to play. Sometimes it might not even be possible to write code that does what you want when your input is noisy, when it's high dimensional, or when it's changing in complicated ways over time, even an expert programmer might not be able to write code that accurately detects what a person is doing with the inputs, or that accurately understands how they want to control the outputs. So we can use machine learning as a tool to build this piece of our system, saving ourselves a lot of time and making it easy to create some really complex, really fun stuff. So how does a machine learning algorithm build this piece of software? The precise answer to that depends on which algorithm you choose to use, and we'll cover several different types in this class. For the most part, we're going to discuss a particular family of algorithms called supervised learning algorithms. These are very useful for building the types of systems I've shown you so far. You can understand a supervised learning algorithm as a tool for building this middle component that computes output values from input values. Instead of using a human writing code to build this component, though, we'll use an algorithm to build it from data. By the way, I'm going to refer to this component here as a model from now on. You can think of a model as a piece of software or as a mathematical function, whatever makes more sense to you. The important thing here is that a model is something that can compute some output values from input values. A supervised learning algorithm builds a model from examples of inputs and outputs. This set of examples is called a training set. You can think of these examples as the thing that trains or teaches the algorithm what the model should ultimately do. Each training example consists of one example input paired with one example output. For instance, in my hand gesture controlled synthesizer, each training example is one example hand position paired with the sound I think should be generated whenever I make that hand position. If you're going to build a new model using machine learning, you can start by finding or creating a training set. Then you'll want to choose a learning algorithm and tell that algorithm to build a model from the training set. This process is called training unsurprisingly. Once you've trained the model, you can show the model any new input, and it will produce some output. Machine learning algorithms are usually designed so that if you show the model an input that's similar to an input in the training set, it should produce an output that's similar to the corresponding output in the training set. So let's do a demo. I want to show you how I built that drum machine program that I showed you earlier. I've got three programs running right now corresponding to the three different modules I talked about in the machine learning processing pipeline. 
On the input side, I have a program written in processing. This program looks at data coming in from my webcam, extracts 100 different numbers from that webcam, and then sends those on to Wekinator. On the output side, I have my drum program written in Chuck, which is making sound. And in the middle, I have Wekinator. I can use Wekinator in the GUI to just send different messages to Chuck using OSC, and Chuck will respond by playing different sounds, as you see. And of course, I could just perform like this, using the drop-down menu, but that's not very much fun. So I'm going to start out, I don't have a training data set, I have to make a training data set from scratch in order to tell my algorithm what kind of model to build. So let's start out by giving it some examples of me standing here. The data capturing me standing here is going to be my example input, and I'm going to tell my Wekinator program to capture that input and match it with the output 1, which is to say I want me standing here to trigger a sound that sounds like this. So let's grab some examples. And you see that Wekinator captured 56 snapshots of me standing here uh, and matched them with that sound. Now let's give it some examples of me not standing there, me standing over here. And I recorded now 80 examples in total. I'm going to take those examples and I'm going to tell my supervised learning algorithm, build me a model from those examples. My model's built, let's try it out. There we go. Pretty good. Changing pretty nicely. If I were happy with this, I could save up this, save this project, save it to a file, open it up in the future, and I could perform with it. I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated. I'm going to add that third sound that you heard in the demo earlier. Sounds like this. And I'm going to give it some training examples of my hand. So I'm just going to show my hand to the webcam, train from this new training set, which includes my old examples plus the new ones I just added. Oh, and that sounds pretty good. And I can kind of keep testing it out and seeing what it does as I move around. And if I wanted, if I wanted to make it a little bit more accurately see my hand, uh, even when it's not exactly in front of the webcam, I can just give it some more examples of my hand in different places, retrain it, and rerun it. And now you see it's a little bit more robust to detecting my hand. All right, there we go. Hopefully at this point, you're coming up with all sorts of ideas of things that you might want to build with these types of algorithms. You probably have plenty of good questions as well, like how does this algorithm actually build a model from data? For what kinds of inputs or outputs can I expect this to work? How much data do I need? How do I figure out what kind of algorithm to use? And how do I get my model to do what I want? We'll spend some time in this class giving you both background knowledge and opportunities to experiment with machine learning in order to prepare you to answer these types of questions.